Hey guys, Mr. B here again, bringing another video. This is uh, the third video in my radical series I'm making for my uh, quarantine students. And uh, we are just entering quarantine here, so um, basically that means we're online for at least two weeks, and then we'll see what happens. So if you haven't watched the first couple of videos in my uh, series, you might want to reconsider doing that. And basically what those videos are on are how to deal with the variables underneath square roots and the other one is cube roots. So it's like one of the skills you need to be able to uh, reduce radicals, right? So if you got variables, you got to deal with them. Just like if you got a numbers, we got to deal with them. So I haven't made, well, I probably got one somewhere on my video of how to reduce square roots and um, cube roots, but uh, I'll probably make another one of those as well. And I'll just drop, I'll drop the first two down in the description or I'll put a little card or something fancy. Um, so let's go just get, jump right to the chase and let's do an example. So I've got the exact same one on the front page there, a square root of 50x, and there's some, some stuff left there from the last time I was working at this. I can hear, I can hear my class saying, oh boy, well yet, you don't have a clue what you're doing. Half the time is true, but uh, yeah. So we've got square root of 50. So 50 is not a perfect square. So if you don't remember that list of perfect squares, you really need to. So I'll just write it here on the side. 1, 4, of course, 1 is useless to us. 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, dot, dot, dot. So it keeps going on. This is 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5. So anytime you want to get this, you can just multiply the numbers number by itself, right? So 50 is not on this list. Therefore, we have to deal with it. It's a pain. Also, our rule for taking the square root of a variable, x to the 7, is we check the exponent. If it's divisible by 2, it's perfect. 7 is not. Therefore, it is not perfect. We got to deal with it. So when I'm first doing this, a lot of times what I like to say to students is, you know what? You got two individual problems here. You got root 50, and you got x to the 7. They're separate, right? You got to deal with them individually. And it's a different, you know, it's, it's a very similar technique, but they're a little bit different, right? So root 50, I have to look on this list and see which one of these actually divides it. And usually I work this way on the list. I start high and I go low. because so I want to find the highest perfect square that divides 50. So obviously, 64 is not going to work. It's bigger. 49 is not going to work. 36 is not going to work. And bam, I hit 25. So 25 is going to work. 25 divided into 50 equals 2. So I can break this guy up into a perfect square, a number on the list, 25, and then 2, right? So square root of 50 is exactly the same as the square root of 25 times 2. So the thing about 25 is I know the square root of 25. It's 5. So I'll break this up into its two individual roots. Now the square root of 25, like I just said, is 5. And then I get left with that root 2 here behind. So root 50 is the same as 5 root 2. All right. So that's reduced. We're good. There's no perfect squares inside of this guy to take out. So that guy's finished. So now... Square root of x to the 7, i got to deal with this. So remember our technique. And if you don't remember, drop down in the description. Watch my videos on square roots of, rat, of uh, variables. So what I want to do is I want to drop, I want to use the exact same technique. I want to find a perfect square variable. So my perfect square variables are the ones that have exponents that are divisible by 2. So we can make a list of this too, right? x squared, x to the 4 x to the 6, x to the 8, and then they keep going every second number, right? Every even number. So I want to find the biggest one that's closest to x to the 7. Of course, that's x to the 6. But all I ever need to do is drop it back one every time, right? So I take this exponent. I break it up into uh, 6 plus 1, which is 7. So now I break it up into two individuals, so x to the 6, and then x to the 1. Now, I don't need to put the 1 there. So the, the square root of x to the 6, well, all I need to do is divide that exponent by 2. Just x to the 3 root x. 
So now, individually, those problems you can probably do on your own. Well, putting it together in one question is not that complicated. You already got it done. You just have to treat them individually. Now, you don't necessarily have to need to write it like this, but basically what that means is this guy turns into whatever's on the outside. So the 5 and the x cubed, they get multiplied together. So 5 x cubed. And then whatever's underneath the square root gets left, and you end up with 2x. Now, in general, I wouldn't write it like this. I would just continue the problem down the page all underneath the root at the same time. So that's why I'm going to deal with the next one. All right. So actually, I think I'll make up another example down here. And then the next one, I'm going to do a little differently. So let's try B. Well, let's call this A2. I think I got to be on the next page. A2. So let me make one off the top of my head. So I'll keep it. I'll keep it simple. 12 x to the 9. All right. So Certainly nothing simple about this stuff, but you know, in terms of the scale of these questions, this one's a pretty simple one. So I need to find a perfect square that divides into 12. So that number is 4, right? So I work backwards, and the number that divides into 12 is 4. So I'm going to break 12 up into 4 times 3. So you see how I'm going to write this one a little bit different. I'm going to keep it all underneath the root this time. But again, if that method up top works for you, do it every single time. Now, x to the 9, so... We got, that's not perfect, it's not divisible by 2, the exponent. So what I need to do is I need to lock it back 1. So x to the 8, that's perfect square right there, divisible by 2. And then x to the 1. So what I end up with when I have this situation is I have perfect, not perfect, perfect, not perfect. So anything that's perfect, I group it up. So I might go... 4x to the 8, so that's my perfect stuff. And then my non-perfect stuff, well, it's just 3x. So as we know, the stuff that's perfect, I'm taking that out. I'm going to actually compute it, right? I'm going to evaluate it, take the square root of 4, take the square root of x to the 8. Well, 3x, I can't. There's literally nothing I can do with that, right? So, so the square root of 4 is 2. That's on the outside of the root. Square root of x to the 8, well, divide 8 by 2, it's 4, so it's x to the 4. And then this guy right here, root 3x, goes right here. It's left. You can't do anything with it. You keep it alone. So there it is. I reduced down from here all the way to here. Now, I can understand this way is a lot more complicated. In terms of, well, it's a lot more complicated looking. It's basically the exact same thing as what we just did up, up top. So, um, you know, whatever way you want, that's the way that's best for you, right? I don't really care. Whatever way works for you, get it done. And there's steps that you can skip. Some people can get from here to here without um, doing it. Some people can get from here all the way to the last step. So um, whatever works for you, I'm just interested that you understand the process and making sure that you can do it. All right, let's try another one. So this one's going to have two variables in it. And again, that doesn't change anything. we still got the exact same process. we got to deal with each thing individually. So i got to deal with the 45. i got to deal with the x to the 12. And then i got to deal with the y to the 17. For each individual, we have their three processes happening. So 45, again, on that list of numbers, we got to go down through. So I'll just flash back for a second. So 45 doesn't work with any of these until I get to 9. And literally, I'd be putting in my calculator if I didn't know. 45 divided by 25. Even though you should know that's not going to work, you got to try it if you don't. So 9 is the first one that worked. And 45 is 9 times 5. So number on the list, number not on the list. X to the 12, that's already perfect, right? X to the 12, 12 is divisible by 2. Nothing I have to do with that guy. Good to go. I'm dumping that in the next step. And then y to the 17, not perfect. 17 is not divisible by 2. So I end up with y to the 16. So I got to break it up, right? I got to break it up into a perfect square. Well, the next closest one to 17 is y to the 16. And then y to the 1, right? So all has to happen for a variable is for the exponent to be divisible by 2. Man, I'd be rich if I got a dollar for every time I said that this morning. So now... All the perfect stuff goes together. The 9, x to the 12, y to the 16. 
So I have 9, x to the 12, y is 16. Those are best buddies, all perfect. And then 5 and the y, those are the misfits. They get left behind, okay? They're not going anywhere. So these are non-perfect, so that means they have to be left behind underneath the root. Square root of 9, well, that's 3. Square root of x to the 12, I divide the exponent by 2. That's x to the 6. And then uh, y to the 16, well, divide the exponent by 2, becomes y to the 8. So those are all the perfect um, squares. And then now I'm left with 5y left behind. All right, this video is getting a bit long, guys. I plan to address cube roots in this, but I think I'll do a separate video for that. Uh, again, thanks for watching. I know it's tough times for a lot of you guys trying to learn online by yourself, but you know what? Uh, there's a lot of good teachers out there making a lot of, doing a lot of good things. So make sure that you take advantage of all the creators on YouTube and all the stuff that's out there. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate the video. I appreciate the all the hard work that you guys are putting in, and I'll hopefully see everyone soon. Thanks for watching.